So welcome to this week's episode of Leadership Soundbites. Um, I'm, I was just going to say I'm super excited, but I say that almost every time. I say that every time. <laughs> but it's so good to get back together. Oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> last week we got to talk with Lori Cozart. And so afterwards, Roka and I are like, okay, there are so many things <laughs> we can continue to unpack around from the power of presence. And so this week we're going to pick, remember Lori talked about the fact that leaders are always going so fast, right? Mm -hmm. And so one, one of the many, so the one that we're going to focus on this week is the power of pause. Yes. And we heard that last week when we were talking with Lori about the power of presence. And so I want to read a quote to kick us off is um, a pause, no matter how long, puts distance between you and your reaction. So what we hope that we're going to start unpacking and, and that you'll walk away with this week is the realization, because we talked about it last week on, we tell ourselves and our brains lie to us about how long stuff takes, that pauses aren't permanent, right? But they're a critical element to us being able to, for lack of a better phrase, self-manage, mm -hmm. right? And navigate through so that we can have that intention. Yeah. And so that's what, that's kind of what this week's all about. So what do you got, Rocco? Yeah, so for me, that pause it, to connect uh, what you were just saying is the pause helps to disrupt or interrupt our, our automatic reactions right? So Lori, Lori shared a little bit about the neuroscience of, you know, our, our minds just will automatically go to something. And so having the ability to pause, regroup, silence that inner brain of yours, or just disrupt that pattern so that you can calm yourself, be aware of your own emotions, be aware of the situation, be aware of the other person that you're interacting with, and really compose yourself to respond in a way that's not reactive. So here's what comes to mind for me, right? And I know you and I talked about different things before we stepped into this, is how do you know mm -hmm. when to pause or when a pause is needed, right? And so one of the things that comes to mind for me is, and, and the stories part of it triggered, right? Because our brains lie to us. They delete, they distort, they do all kinds of great things. And it's it goes back to the fight or flight part, right? So that we can survive. And so the pause part of it, if, if we're feeling our bodies are aware of something, right? And we feel ourselves starting to have an emotional reaction to something, right? And this could be personal stuff. It can be at work. I think those are, that is an opportune time. <laughs> To pause. And when you pause, I think in that moment is asking yourself or myself, what story do I have going right now? Yeah. And to recognize, to be able to surface what it is. And then what do you do? You replace it with a different one. Right. <laughs> one right. that doesn't have you so emotionally charged. But I think that is one opportunity because otherwise it's like, what am I pausing every five seconds? No. But there's certain key points that I think you know, times that it's, su it's going to be super beneficial so that you're not spending all your time in recovery right. of whatever this thing that you stepped into. Right. And, you know, it, and it may be hard. So I, I want to touch a little bit about what you were saying is how do you get started with pausing or be aware to, to even know when to pause. Yeah. Um, back when we were being mentored, I'm going to bring up her name again, Margie Hagany, because she had such an impact on both of us. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as I've shared before, I always got the hand from Margie because I was rapid firing responses and reacting to Can what... I just interject for a minute? Yeah. I want to let people know, Margie wasn't spanking Rocco. Okay. No, no. <laughs> when she got that hand, no. it was just the visual pause. The hand, well. like pause. <laughs> um, it, because she spoke about that a lot. Because I, in the moment, was reacting to what I was hearing as opposed to really being present, as Lori talked about mm -hmm. uh, in our session with Lori. And so one of the things that she asked of me is she asked, like, how can you signal yourself? 
How can you calm yourself in any situation? Mm -hmm. And and so my my thing was, I, I do this. That simple gesture of putting my hand over my mouth reminds me that I'm not there for me. Mm -hmm. I'm there for the other person. And I have to quiet my brain which allows me to pause in the moment and respond versus just react and, you know, constantly be thinking, how am I going to, how am I going to respond to this? Or because you're in that judgment mode, as opposed to just taking in what you're being, what's being said and heard. So, um, but just thinking about what's that signal for you in order to pause. Yeah. yeah. And it's the, so the signal for you, the, the, the times, the indicators, you know, if you're emotionally charged, I think the other two is if, if you're a leader and I'm going to say, and we've talked about before, leadership is not about the title that you hold. You mm -hmm. could be an unofficial leader, but pause before you go into a meeting or where you've got a group that's coming together. And in that moment, set the intention for yourself. So pausing super supports presence and intention for yourself. And it's, it's seconds. It mm -hmm. doesn't take, I mean, think about the word you and I talked about this. Think about the whole, the word pause. Pause doesn't feel like we're going on vacation for a week. Okay. Pause is just like, boom, done. And the more you practice it, the easier it gets. Yeah. So you let's call out the about. elephant. Let's call out the elephant in the room. Which elephant though? So to pause means you have to be comfortable with silence. Mm -hmm. even if it is just for a second. So if we were to pause and count to 10, as we often do when we're asking questions, but just to count to 10, it seems like a lifetime if you're uncomfortable with silence. So to me, the elephant in the room is, is being comfortable with silence and getting comfortable with silence. So I'm going to ask you a question and I'm going to pause and count to 10. Mm -hmm. and we're going to do this real time before you respond. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So Rocco, what is something that comes to mind for you where the power of pausing, pausing has helped you in your leadership journey or in your coaching journey? Okay. It's been to be present. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it supports that. So it, to those listening or watching, it may have felt like a ridiculously long time, right? <laughs> And so the insight to that, that you were talking about when you count to 10 is you give people, you pause in that moment, but you give people the time to think. Yes. Because a lot of times as we've learned and experienced mm -hmm. it, it's in second seven through 10 that people actually get to form a response and they could think and they processed it and everything else. And it's so funny because the pausing part of it is so critical. There was a leader that we had in one of our classes, right? The A3, mm -hmm. A3 thinking. And when we were basically pulling the curtain back to share with them how powerful it is to, to pause and count to 10 after you ask a question, mm -hmm. he, he felt, you could see the light bulb go off and he goes, oh my gosh. And I said, what? And he goes, I want to tell a story. He said, I was presenting to senior leadership. And he said, I asked a question and quickly moved on to something else. Mm -hmm. Got down, I was done, boom, sat down. And he said, and then the guy who came up after me ended up answering the question that I had asked because people actually started having thoughts about whatever it was. He said, had I, and I should have been in front of the room doing that. Had I just paused and counted 10 in that moment, it would have been me up in the front answering those questions. So it's super powerful that like Lori mentioned, we're so fast at running from thing to thing to thing, but our brains don't, the we need time. critical thinking part yeah. of it. It, they don't operate that quickly. Not yeah, And that, I think that's why when we were talking with Lori in that session, when she mentioned that slowing down, that, that was that one thing that spoke to me so much about, we've got to be able to slow our brains down. And one way to do that is, is through pausing, mm -hmm. whether it's for ourselves or when, like, like we just practice with asking the question and pausing right? And you know, part of it too, when you were telling that story about A3 thinking, what was coming back to me is one of the shifts for me when, when we were going through that mentorship with, with Margie was 
practicing that pause and I was actually able to read the room better when I paused because I actually could focus on, oh, this person looks like they're struggling mm -hmm. with you know, the content or the question or, you know, something's going on. I could see the emotion in their face and in their body language. And it allowed me to follow back up on that as opposed to just keep moving. Like you said about the, the story of the guy is just keep, keep on moving and not address it. And, and that makes a better connection to the point of relationships. And, and that's where the power yeah, is. It just dawned on me. Because I, the, the, the thing that came to mind when you were talking, right, is that we move so fast, we go from thing to thing to thing to thing, to thing because we have this freaking laundry list of stuff mm -hmm. that we have to do. Mm -hmm. And so we're just going to power. And, and when I say we, if this isn't you in the listening audience or viewing audience, just disregard it because I'm speaking for me and everyone else who this may be true for. Um, but we end up with this list that we're just checking the box. We're boom, 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 mm -hmm. boom, boom, going through everything. And it, and it, in that moment, when you're talking, Rocco, to me, pausing is the equivalent of breathing mm -hmm. because you have people sometimes that will just boom, everything at you and there's no breath. And you're like, oh my gosh, take a breath, take a breath. So I think in, in that moment, it feels like pausing is, is vital to good leadership and, and great relationships as breathing is to us, our sustainment of life. That was powerful. Well, it's true. I mean, it's yeah, yeah, no, I, I, that was powerful what you just said. But that was because of what you said. <laughs> this is such a love fest. <laughs> well, I didn't have that in my head or thought about it. I know, and I love it. I love it. But it all started with our conversation with Lori. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's just, it's just super cool stuff. So, I mean, I, the power of pause, there, there is so, so much power in pausing mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be this ridiculous long period of time, but it's the yeah. time that we can self-adjust. Yes. To your point, you know, is that if we're in the room and we're just, you know, like back in the day, it was Max Headroom on this monitor that, you know, um, but I mean, if that's all we are is, is a Max Headroom in the front of the room and we're not in, engaging, we don't have those touch points and interactions with people, you know, we might as well just send a video recording of what it is and not be there to actually, you know, create those connections. So I've enjoyed this topic. Enjoyed I have too. Topic. So what, what is one thing, Rocco, and maybe two with you or, yes. or whatever yes. it is that you want people to walk away with? Well, you know, when we first started talking about doing this, this uh, podcast around the power of excuse me, a power of pause, I was thinking, you know, it's all about self-awareness or shifting perspective. But as we were talking about it today, it you know, the, the thing that I'm taking away is it, it really goes back to that slowing down mm -hmm. and creating that presence and relationship with the people that you're interacting with. And, and that's the power of pause. It can help you deepen that relationship and that interaction with the people that you're interacting with. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing too, um, is, is we're creating the space um, because we're, we're all so different, you know, that, that if we've got people that, I mean, I'm a bullet per point person, you know that. And so it's like, boom, boom, boom. And so if we don't create that space for, for other people who aren't at the same rapid pace that we may be, we lose that perspective. And, and that's, that's, I think is a huge loss because I mean, when, when I've done projects or worked on stuff with other people, the end result of what we did is so much more powerful than just me on my own. Yeah, I can produce something and there'll be a result but it's not near the quality. And if I don't involve other people, and I think that pause is that opportunity to let other people in who may not be in the fast lane on the freeway. <laughs> you know, they're, they're in the slow lane and they're waiting to take the exit, you know? Um, so I think that's, it's powerful stuff and it doesn't take as long as you think. No, it does so. not. That's what I got. Practice. practice That's what we got. Well, pause. it's all about practice and giving yourself grace that, you know, it's, we're going to be perfectly imperfect at this, That's right. um, but at least try. 
yes. practice, try, um, and, and then notice the difference. Notice what happens when you do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. this has been fun. Yes, it has. Fun doing, Another yeah. fun-filled podcast with yeah, you. Yeah, for us anyway. Hopefully yes. you guys are enjoying it as well. So this has been Leadership Soundbites with Roko and Michelle, and we hope you like, subscribe, and share. Comment. Let us know what you want to hear. Get other people involved. We're here for you. Anyway, yeah. till next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.